I want to ask you about uh, your time as AG, though. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Just wondering, I <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I mean, when you were there, I mean, I know you weren't there for a long time. Did you see anything? I mean, obviously, Russiagate was bunk. Didn't you have the ability to look into it, to investigate, to dig into who Yeah, so, so I supervised the Mueller investigation, and I'll never forget, and I've talked about this before. Uh, in fact, I wrote a book, Above the Law, if anybody wants to. It's available on Amazon. Um, and what I talk about, uh, I don't think I mentioned a lot in this book, but but I, I know I, I remember this like it was yesterday because it was so impactful. Is um, you know there was a there was a lot of controversy when I got appointed. Uh, I had been on CNN as a commentator before I came to the Department of Justice, and for like four months they hired me to you know sort of be the conservative commentator. And you know one of the things I had said, which was very true, which is I could imagine that uh, the President Trump would appoint somebody new that would come in and, and, and had control of the budget of Mueller and would reduce the budget, thereby limiting you know his ability and his scope and and all that and you know and I'd said that just as a commentator, no plan to do it. But then you know sort of everybody lost their mind when I got you know became the supervisor of the Mueller investigation. It's like I almost looked prophetic, like I had planned this. Thing. I, mean, I was just <laughs> literally just you know. But is that what you did? You reduced the budget or what? No, I didn't do anything, but the, but I had to go through a an ethics review, um, you know, with with the most senior career DOJ official, who actually it was because of the way it's written. It was my decision on whether I just you know I could consult him, but it was my decision ultimately. And he, I didn't ask him to write a recommendation. Of course, he wrote a recommendation which says you know I should have recused because of these. These things I said on CNN, and I was just like, "This is nonsense." I, you know, I've I was a U.S. attorney for five and a half years. I know what it's like to be independent and look at facts and apply the law and make decisions. And you know, kind of my my commentary as a paid CNN analyst is not going to affect how I do this job. And you know, it's just it wasn't even apples for apples. But anyway, so you know, fast forward, I, I clear that hurdle and I get read into the Mueller investigation. And, you know, the first thing they say is, you know what, Matt, we have, uh, they have not found any evidence of any connection. There's no evidence of any connection between the Russian government and the Trump campaign. And I thought to myself, well, why do we have this investigation? And so then I, then I, the, the, you know, there were several other pieces and parts. And, you know, one of the things I got read into, for example, was the, um, Roger Stone investigation. You know, there were several other components of this investigation that that I was also read into and you know given a status update on. But you know, at that point in time, you have a decision to make, and you know, I mean, it, life is all about you know sort of replaying. Did you make the right decision? Did they make the right decision? But the decision ultimately, and if you think about how the regulations played out, uh, if I wanted to fire Bob Mueller or end his investigation, um, he they had to be for cause, and so that was a that was a big hurdle. And you also think about um, you know doing justice. Is it better for Donald Trump to have a full report from Mueller saying there was no connection, or have Matt Whitaker, acting Attorney General, shut it down because there's no Pointed connection? Pointed by Trump. Yeah, I mean, and so you you it just it it you know I the two things you know that that in retrospect. I, I now believe is that, you know, sort of the, the Mueller investigation was a total hit job by anti-Trumpers. It's, I mean, it is literally the January 6th committee, but inside the Department of Justice. Well, what about uh, Ukraine as well? Same thing. Yeah, <laughs> that was just the, the train got rolling before they realized what the evidence was. And then they kind of were, you know, I mean, this Nancy but, but, Pelosi hates Donald Trump and she had the power to get enough votes to file articles of impeachment and prove them out of the House. Full stop. I mean, that that's why it happened. And I'm sure if Nancy was here and was honest um, and not dealing with her husband's you know legal issues, um, I think she would say, I cannot believe, you know, how tough Donald Trump is, how, you know, how hard, how hard he fought, how how good his defense was and how, you know, he kept the Republican Party, you know, solid and, you know, supporting him through those, you know, those impeachment trials. Half the Republican Party, maybe. Yeah, I don't, I mean, you lost. I think they feigned support. I think a lot of these guys, they feigned support. I mean. All right, name names. Of like who feigned support? Lindsey Graham. He comes They're, at, like, he's, he, he comes out on TV that's talking about how he's all in favor of Trump, but come on. 
You see him go you know, walk, walking down on the floor and he gives Kamala Harris a fist bump. He's not he's not really behind the president. You look at you, you have uh, in 2016 to 2018, the Republicans, the Republican, Republican Party entertained and allowed the, the Russiagate nonsense to persist. Yeah, they, they could. I mean, you, you make a good point. Although, I mean, I think, you know, I think Cash and Devin, I think we're, you know, we're trying to get to the bottom of it. I mean, it was I just a lot. Agree. There was the, the I think the thing that we all forget was just how much smoke created by the FBI and by, you know, sort of the left and the Clinton campaign, how much smoke there was. You had to, you couldn't see through it because you just, every time you'd, you'd like run into something, you'd be like, oh, that's, I mean, maybe, I, you know, I thought this was, it, you just, it was, it was a shiny object in smoke and you just, it was very hard to get to the bottom. And, and you know, there were a lot of people that didn't want to get to the bottom of it because they wanted that smoke there. They wanted to hamstring Donald Trump. And the question, you know, that I come back to, Tim, and I'm sorry, I know this is your show, so I don't want to dominate the time, but that's what I, you're here for, man. What What is so dangerous about Donald Trump? Why do people want to take him down so enthusiastically? <clears throat> well, I got some ideas. It could be that uh, back in 2009, it was, or I should say in 2012, it was reported that in 2009, the CIA had reported they wanted to overthrow the uh, Bashar al-Assad, the Assad family in Syria, because we were trying to build an oil pipeline, the Qatar-Turkey pipeline, up into Europe to offset the Russian Gazprom monopoly. And uh, Syria explicitly told the United States, we're going to support our ally Russia, not allow you to build this. In fact, we're going to get Iran to tap the same gas field, send it up through Iraq, so we could basically steal the oil, and then we can control oil prices into Europe, screwing with your allies. And so then, conveniently for the U.S., there was a civil war in Syria. The Arab Spring occurs. And uh, we'll just throw it to, we'll, we'll fast forward a little bit to Ukraine, in which mm-hmm. Gazprom controls a large portion, the largest, I believe, of, of natural gas flowing into Europe through there. Now they have the Nord Stream pipeline is mm-hmm. coming from Russia. And uh, all of a sudden, you get this conflict in the Euromaidan movement where Ukraine wants either join the join NATO, join the EU, join NATO, join the West, or side with Russia and their trade federation. And that's all happening. Then Donald Trump comes in and he says, we're getting our troops out of the Middle East. Well, that's bad news if you dedicated 10, 15, 20 years to building this pipeline and getting oil to your allies in Europe. But what does Donald Trump, he gets elected. What does he do? He gets elected. And sure enough, the conflict in Ukraine dies down, simmers down. ISIS is getting crushed. Abraham Accords. Well, that's big bad news. If you need the conflict to justify destroying the country of Syria to build an oil pipeline, our gas pipeline, the Qatar-Turkey pipeline. And now Joe Biden gets elected and it's right back on track exactly where we thought we'd be. Ukraine war lights back up. We got Gazprom back in the news, Germany feuding with Russia. And you have Donald Trump who was telling them the entire time to become independent, stop relying on Russia. Now, that's probably surface level scratching why they may be yep. mad. It's very for, foreign policy heavy. You could also look at domestic policy, Donald Trump banning critical race theory contracting. Com- companies that engage in critical race theory trainings couldn't contract with the United States. All of these things just fly in the face of their agenda. And then you have the personal. Oh boy, was Hillary Clinton mad. It was her turn. So mm-hmm. a lot of reasons why they really, yeah. really hate Donald Trump. Yeah, but boy, I mean, I just, we, I've never seen, I mean, we've, we've, in our history, we've never seen a president this persecuted. Um, Kennedy. Although he wasn't persecuted in public, yeah. they just decided behind the scenes, I believe, that it was time. I mean, I think that they whacked the guy. I don't know for sure, but I mean, it's just so much evidence yeah. that it was coordinated by the know. mob, by whoever. Yeah, I don't know. I know that um, Pew Research showed that the tr- uh, Trump's press coverage was 5% positive. Five. Yeah, I believe Obama's that. was 40, 42, I believe. So here's Obama. The first thing he does to get in office is he orders a drone strike blowing up a, a village of women and children. He, he commits extrajudicial assassinations on American citizens, but the media can't stop, let's just say, patting him on the back for a family-friendly uh, way to describe it. <laughs> Plus, we're in the Donald age— Donald Trump comes in, and uh, the, one thing, the one thing they give him is when he fires missiles in Syria. They're like, this is it. And I'm like, there it is. When he, fi- when he fires missiles on an airport in Syria, all of a sudden the media is like, Donald Trump's presidential moment. Oh, yeah, starting wars. That's what they love about him. But uh, when the economy is booming— what do they do? They lie, cheat, and they smear. Every single thing the guy does, it never ends. Yeah, we never were in the age of like social media manipulation like we are now. Yeah. So if, if Trump had exist, been president 30 years ago or someone like it, maybe there have been newspaper articles. And, but it would have been all a lot of it behind the scenes because that's all they had. Now it's social media. It's slander on yeah. the news and all that crap. So we're seeing it for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, the fact that he fights through it all and is you know not only as popular as he is, um, so that's why. But just like he's he is never tired. I mean, it's like he eats it like a candy bar. 
it, it's really it's, it's extraordinary. Um, just never seen a force like this in my life. And you know, I mean, I, I'm around him a lot and get to spend a lot of time with him. And and I'm I, I sometimes am surprised and just that you know, a kid from Ankeny, Iowa. Uh, gets these opportunities, but I also know that he's just like an, he's a no BS kind of guy. Yep. He doesn't worry, you know, doesn't worry that you didn't go to Yale or you didn't go to Harvard or, you know, sort of doesn't. Another reason it, they don't like, like him. Can you, are you effective? Can you get the job done? Do you speak clearly and, you know, make commitments and live up to those commitments? It's those, you know, it's just a basic, you know, kind of what you'd expect out of a guy that's, uh, you know, sort of built buildings. I look at everything that's, that's happened over the past several years and what's happening now with the January 6th committee, and there is a malignancy in this country that is gutting it from the inside. Donald Trump, what did, what did he do? He brought auto industry back to Michigan, mm-hmm. uh, an investment of, I think, around $3 billion. He, he cuts out the TPP. He starts bringing manufacturing back to the United States. The best numbers of our lives, Jim Cramer says. Foreign policy, Abraham Accords, peace in the Middle East starting to take form. He's meeting with North Korea, walking into the DMC with no security. You take a look at the stuff this, that Donald Trump did, and it's like, wow. One, one of the greatest presidents I've ever experienced. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant a little bit to say the greatest president, uh, one of the greatest presidents. I've said that before. But I'm like, okay, I, I get it. I wasn't alive for a bunch of the other presidents. But in my lifetime, the foreign policy actions... Not perfect, but really good. No new wars, getting our troops out of the Middle East, trying to make peace with North Korea, shoring up our borders, getting rid of the TPP, bringing manufacturing back. I'm just like, wow, all that stuff was really good for us. And then you take a look at the Democrats and everything they're doing now, and it is gutting and ripping this country apart. And it's because of people like Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi, who we know, is enriching herself off of her position that somehow she just makes these excellent, excellent stock decisions that everybody She's a heck has. of a stock picker. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then people <laughs> make a social media account tracking her stock decisions. It, get, it gets banned. Yep. You know, you look at the level of corruption, the lies, the cheating, the stealing, and it just makes me sick. Yep. And the worst thing about it is where is anyone to do anything about it? Yeah, and Tim, you might be on to something here because I was just, as you were talking about all that, it struck me recently that um, Donald Trump, like you said, had kind of brought peace to the Middle East and was disengaging the U.S. from the need for Middle Eastern energy. And what is Joe Biden doing? He's going right back there, exactly, and reengaging in the Middle East uh, with the Saudis. And you know, uh, you know, he obviously went to Israel. I mean, I, I don't know. When I was there last week, um, they were talking about uh, how I guess he drove into the West Bank. Or Gaza, I, one, he went into one of the occupied territories. I I hate using their terminology. Oh, Biden did. Yeah, Biden did, and he took off the Israeli flag because he was flying an American flag and wow. Israeli flag. But they took off the Israeli flag before he entered um, the. I, I mean, I, I, what do you I, call that? Like the the part of Israel that is Palestine. Is, is, I don't yeah, know. It's not Palestine. It I don't know who you ask. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it really it's that area is so interesting to me, and having been there now and seen it with my own eyes, that is a fascinating uh you know history and it's a current like real politic issue um it's just so, i think it's, gaza you're talking you, about gaza the west yeah west well bank. so i guess we can call them gaza and the west bank i don't want to call them occupied territories because they're not occupied they're part of israel um but I anyway think, I, think I, you take I digress a look, you take a look at what big tech is doing you take a look at how democrats actively support a lot of what they're doing you take a look at the cult ideology gender ideology critical race theory etc And these things just serve to erode and destroy the United States. Mm -hmm. You don't see these things in China. You don't see these things in in India. You don't see them in, in, as you see them somewhat in Europe. But in the United States, it is profound. Bill Maher brought it up. I mean, you look at the stuff that's happening with uh, kids getting uh, sex change operations. This is happening predominantly in in hyper liberal areas and Mm -hmm. not in conservative areas, but it's not happening in other countries. You take a look at TikTok, for instance. The things on TikTok, the overt wokeness allowed. We got banned from TikTok. We really don't know why. It may have been because we had Alex Jones on the show. In China, they don't allow the woke stuff because they know it's, it, will, it, will, it will erode the base of your country. But in the United States, that's, that is the law. That is what yeah. you have to abide by in social media. It's almost the more destructive the technology is for society, the more it is in, you know, encouraged to be used and, and, uh, and prolific. It, it's really extraordinary. Um, you know, big tech is, I think, going to get its reckoning here in the next uh, you know, year to three. Um, they've well, been given tremendous powers, and they have not, they've abused those powers. We rag on Republicans quite a bit because they don't do a whole lot. But yeah. I will say from 16, 2016 to 2018, you know, 
maybe they just didn't realize the extent to which things were occurring when they were occurring the way they were. Then they lost in 2018 to the Democrats, and they gained back some seats in 2020, but not enough for the majority. Maybe come November, we're uh, three, three and a half months away about. Maybe then the Republicans will get the House and the Senate. Yeah. Maybe we'll start to see some subpoenas. I want to see this. I want to see Joe Biden impeached for the Ukraine scandal. Joe Biden engaged in an overt a quid pro quo. Uh, uh, it's, it's remarkable, remarkable that, Don, that, that, that Donald Trump could discover this, seemingly bumbling upon it. And when he asks the Ukrainian president, yeah, you look into what that was about. Mm -hmm. They impeach him for it mm -hmm. because they knew Joe Biden was their guy. A made man would get away with, with the, the crimes he committed. Going to Ukraine and saying, I am going to deny a billion dollar loan guarantee illegally, even though Congress approved it, because I can do whatever I want unless you fire the prosecutor. By the way, the prosecutor happened to, to, happened to be investigating a company called Burisma where his son worked, but that's besides the point, according to the media. His son was on the board of Burisma at the time. Yeah, $83,000 a month. And Victor Shokin was investigating that. And Joe Biden uh, went to the president and said, fire him or you're not getting the billion dollars. And the president said, you can't do that. And Joe Biden said, call the president, see what he says. Well, SOB, guy gets fired. That guy needs to be impeached over that. We need a congressional investigation. We need a select committee. We need an investigation on the 529 insurrection when they threw a fight, when they set fire to the St. John's Church and the guard post, forced the president to a, into a bunker. I expect to see subpoenas of all of the Biden administration officials. I expect to see subpoenas, contempt of Congress, everything they can do if they win. And you know what? That's what worries me. Because well, it sounds what? too Hold good on. to be I true. Mean, but but do you think Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice is going to receive those referrals? Of course not. Uh, of course as not. enthusiastically as he did the one with you know for Bannon and Navarro and and of course uh, he won't. I mean the embarrassment that I they just, did I, to Peter Navarro. I I still this you know, I was I was like I, the swearing thing is really. <laughs> Sorry, I was Family upset. I, I feel like I was very, Sorry. very upset. Um, that the way that the the way Roger Stone was taken down, I thought oh, that yeah. was ridiculous. CNN in fact, getting tipped in off. In fact, you know, I was the acting attorney general at the time, and I let you know Chris Ray know, uh, you know, uh, that 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 was not acceptable. That that was. That was clearly intentional middle finger. CNN was topped, tipped off, but you don't need to go. I mean, I understand officer safety, but we're talking. Roger Stone is but not. Couldn't you have done anything about yeah, it? Uh, well, what? I mean, you know, you can you can get the explanation. Yeah. Um, but you know, sort of op operationally, I don't think we want attorney generals, attorneys general involved in how to arrest someone they're going to arrest or how you're going to execute a search warrant. I mean, that's, you know, that's you leave that to the you people see, that the, are doing the, the job. But and, this is the issue. But you, the Democrats get in and think the exact opposite of the way you think. They yeah, say, light them up, burn them down. Right. I know. And, and and you see that example of Navarro being pulled off a plane. Uh, if you, shackled. You know, if you believe mm -hmm. Peter, yeah, he was, you know, his feet were, his legs were shackled. I mean, this is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. I mean, he should have been given a notice to appear. Right. Uh, it's a misdemeanor, remember. Contempt of Congress is a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. So Bannon was convicted of a misdemeanor. Right. Navarro was charged with a misdemeanor. We've never... I mean, that's the same. I, and, I, and again, I, I, I'm just telling you, that's the same as like if you get a ticket uh, in a, a, a national park. I mean, it's like it's the same docket that you see in that case. It's What, are the, what is it? Two month minimum uh, in sentencing guidelines up to two years? It's up to one year. Miss up means to one year, one? under a year. Yeah. Is that, oh, right, right, right. It's two because he's charged yeah. with two counts, right. I believe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that is like on par with like um, what driving on a suspended license. Yeah, I mean it's federal, so it's a little different. Uh, you can't really the the state. You know, state each state has a yeah. different thing. I mean, I know, you know, my experience in Iowa having you know defended. I mean, you would do you wouldn't you wouldn't go to court on a misdemeanor. You wouldn't have a trial on a misdemeanor typically. I mean, that's that's why the case that's why the case was so fast. Right. And ban it. I mean, it's like, you know, it's just a, there were two witnesses and it's just, he it's a person. Yeah. I mean, he didn't call any and the jury was out for three hours. And, but of course, waited for their free lunch. Right. Um, <laughs> how, how long do you think they're going to sentence, sentence him? Did they, uh, did they sentence him yet? I, 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 30 days or less, I'm guessing. I, he yeah. might, he might just get the, you know, I mean, he could get Slap probation. Yeah. I, I, it is, um, this is going to be, I, I hope this isn't controversial, but, you know, Congress has a jail in the Capitol. And their sergeant, if they really wanted to enforce their subpoenas, they would send their sergeant arms to go get these people and put them in Congress jail. 
and really? actually, you know, exert some like, you know, some instead of offloading it to the Department of Justice I, uh, and making it, you know, again, making it appear to be something much larger than it actually is. I want to see Republicans win in November in uh, the House and the Senate, but I don't want to see your typical Republicans win. I want to see people like Marjorie Taylor Greene win. You know, she's she's considered controversial. The media smears her left and right. She's got certainly views that I don't agree with. I don't care. She's fearless and she's she's fighting against this stuff. She's going to Congress and forcing these people to do their jobs, much like Trump was. That's why people like Trump. That's why why people like Marjorie. That's why people like Thomas Massey or Rand Paul. But they also like people that fight. Mm-hmm. And right. they, they want people that stand up to the just the BS of Washington, D.C., that don't like want to get invited to the, you know, white wine cocktail parties where everybody stands around with a drink and chortles about conservatives. And, you know, they want people that sort of actually are unwilling to play the game right. that are going to go to Washington, D.C. and That's they're going to fight MTG. for what they, you know, yeah, they, that they fight for what they got elected on. And I mean, you see, you have to be in tremendous uh, self-confidence to survive that. I'll, t- I'll tell you, uh, I'll give you a good example of, I, I think, the, the issue, the left and the right, uh, of the left and the right. There was uh, uh, a guy who worked at Taco Bell, and he had a mask on that said Black Lives Matter. And his bosses went to him and said, you can't wear that political stuff while you're working mm-hmm. here. And he says, I'm not taking it off. And they said, if you don't take that mask off, we're going to tell you to leave. You can't work while you have it on. He says, fine. He goes outside, he films himself and says, they wouldn't let me wear this. The activists attacked the Taco Bell until Taco Bell issued a statement saying you can wear Black Lives Matter stuff. Conservatives don't do anything like that. They say, well, but if I do that, I'll lose my job. It's like, you're right. The left doesn't care when they lose their job. Mm-hmm. And you can argue, well, it's because they don't have kids and stuff. Fair point. I'm just saying. When the left is willing to go to Roger Stone's house at five in the morning with CNN being tipped off and they bring him out this way and the right is unwilling to do anything about it or push back in an equal yeah. or, or opposing way, then you will get this indefinitely. It, it, you know, it, it's remarkable to me that what happened to Roger Stone happened while you were the acting yeah. AG. I, I mean, listen, I, I, hate, I take responsibility for it. It was under my watch. I was in charge of the Department of Justice at the time. Um, you know, I mean, I raised holy hell as best I could. Um, but, you know, I just don't, you know, this is philosophically the best you can do is know that it sh- shouldn't and won't happen the next time because and then it does well i mean you know it does and it doesn't i mean you know at least while i was there we didn't have anything like that go down um but you you know this is where we have to um have a higher standard for all no matter what party you are for all public servants we have to have a higher standard we can't just have our public servants be like everybody else and hold them to the same standard because it's going to end up, you know, as it's going to be just a complete. Well, you're right. Blank uh, show. You, See, you guys are killing you, me. The cluster. You're right. Show. But here's the, here's the issue. Show. Thank you. Right now you have these young progressive personalities on YouTube, or whatever, claiming Republicans are steamrolling everything. And why do they believe that? Because they think they should get universal health care. But those Republicans just won't let them. Meanwhile, Republicans are actually compromising on everything, yeah. on most things, uh, gun control being the perfect example. When the Democrats on the left argue that Republicans are the roadblock because they're only giving you a little bit. Meanwhile, the Democrats are arresting former administration officials, which is like the red flag of all red flags in terms of governmental collapse and crisis. Mm-hmm. The right being unwilling to do anything or saying, you know what? We're going to stand on decorum. It's like, congratulations, stand on your decorum. When they come and shackle your feet, let me know, and I'll salute you as you go to the gulag. That's what that's what's happening. No, and I'm not saying that the 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 right should you know unilaterally disarm. Um, In fact, it's quite the opposite. You know, we got to play the same game they're playing. Uh, We need to know the game we're playing and then play it well. But this does not end up well. Um, I I don't. You know, if we if we just keep smacking each other. Uh, that's not good for the American people. And that's why the voters ultimately, you know, need to get the right people. I mean, I, I and throw the ones out that they don't that aren't working. And we need to have we need to have more primaries and we need to have yep. more, you know, contested elections and, and and it needs to be from the bottom to the top. And and it just, you know, for me, um, you know, we can't um, you know, we all learn as we go and we you know we all adapt and adjust and i just don't think republicans are learning as well 
well, uh, as Democrats right now. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.